center for the 500. Prepares to climb back aboard for another run. Well, the more we're here, the less we know. We came up to the booth saying, a couple of the guys in the back will go out, you know, the open cars will run together. If you guys make some car runs, there aren't going to be any big packs. There's not going to be any big draft. And what happens? First thing, Joey Logano leads everybody out into a big 18-car draft, and who's smack in the middle of it? Our pole sitter, Chase Elliott. Well, I think we knew that being a rookie, being new to Daytona in the, in the cup car, that he wanted to get out there and, and mix it up. They really want to be able to put that car in a position like they're going to be more than likely in the duel, but certainly on Sunday in the 500, to just get a really good feel. Get him some laps. Uh, obviously, a very fast race car. And, and I, I'm really happy that they did that because I, I think they need to do that. They can't be gun shy at this point. They need to get out there and do everything you need to do to try to win this race and not, not look at it as we're working. Sterling, you always get some deep frown lines when you see a big knot of cars like that in practice. Yeah, well, it, it, you know, it's, it's risk reward. Now, you got to do it. Now, we say it every year we come down here. You got to get out there and see what your car feels like in all the other in the traffic. But I think two things are going on. Two drivers, I think, are really probably Chase Elliott and uh, Brian Vickers. They're probably telling Chase, "Well, this is the way Jeff liked it." And they're probably telling Vickers, well, this is the way Tony liked it. And there's probably some other crew chiefs are saying, this is the way we ran it last year. So you kind of got to filter through all that. And it's just what this driver needs for the conditions this year. Comfort or speed, which is more important? Oh, uh, you know, I mean, speed is certainly important. But uh, to me, Daytona is such a narrow racetrack. This race is going to be run during the daytime uh, on Sunday for the 500. And I think you're going to want your car to handle pretty well in the middle of a pack. Because in those closing 10 laps of the Daytona 500, they're going to be pushing, shoving. It's going to get wild. You better have a pretty good driving car. And then every tribe has one contrary. Mr. Lonely. Hello. Lonely. I'm Mr. Lonely. Thanks, Chad Kennels. See how my fat, uh, my car goes by myself. You got everything under control. You're feeling really, really, really pretty good. And it takes a hop. And it does, it's going to hit something. Yes, I'm coming. By the way. Well, I lost my front bumper. <laughs> the back stretch. History. Doosh. Hmm. Jimmy Johnson spin out, never hit anything, so I wouldn't have been surprised. And I know that NASCAR and everybody here in Daytona is looking at possibly doing that. That that part of the racetrack uh, is incorporated in the 24 hours of Daytona, and so it is a chicane back there for their sports cars. So I don't know if they can do that, but certainly would have saved the splitter on that 48 car. That's what they make paint for. <laughs> well, this was never a problem until we developed cars with those splitters that are right down on the pavement and otherwise, or they just work like a scraper as they get into uh, an uneven surface like that. We listen in on Jimmy Johnson and team. Uh, do you think you're screwed out there? Yeah, I know. I laughed. If that would be so boring, I'll ride with him out there. I would be very entertaining. <clears throat> So, spotter girl Marvin wants to go for a ride. Big Earl, put him over on the right set. And we'll hear some noise then. Earl knows how to lighten up the moment. Uh, I mean, I think they've realized that this is not going to be really exciting, but uh, I love that Jack Kadaus is going to stick to his plan. He's not going to go away from it. Hey, back to work, Bert. Practice for tomorrow's Can-Am Duel at Daytona continues. 